Hello and welcome to Secrets of Organ Playing podcast. This is a show dedicated to helping you become a better organist. We're your hosts, Vidas Pinkavichus and Usham Motuzaita Pinkavichin. We have over 25 years of experience of playing the organ. And we've been teaching thousands of organists online from 89 countries since 2011. So now let's jump in and get started with the podcast for today. We hope you'll enjoy it. Hi guys, this is Vidas. And Usha. Well, let's start episode 577 of Secrets of Organ Playing podcast. This question was sent by Steven. And he writes, Hi Vidas, not long ago, Vidas, it was my job to serve at the organ to lead a congregation of mostly untrained singers in a meeting outside of a worship service with the singing of a closing song, with which most of them were unfamiliar. The tune was St. Clement, a traditional hymn, not especially easy for a trained voice to sing, that's better known to members of the Anglican faith and perhaps a Methodist or two in the audience, but completely unfamiliar to and everybody else. This number does not appear in any of the newer hymnals. I have only found it included in a couple of very old editions of hymn books, which have been out of print for a long time. People singing this tune on YouTube videos are doing so at a tempo moderato about half the time, and every half of the time they sing at something close to an adagio. Three stanzas of this closing song were to be sung. Uh, The words were provided to the audience, and I began with a short introduction and took the first stanza at an andante, slow walk tempo, thinking that the space would keep everyone together and the organ would lead. I was wrong. Instead of the organ leading them, the Anglicans in the audience, who were used to hearing it sung at a still slower tempo, ignored the organ and sang it at the tempo they remember from their worship services. Some of them even lagged behind a few others. The result was that they all trailed behind the organ through the whole first stanza and were laid to the finish line at the point where the organ paused between stanzas. They were still trudging through the words of the first stanza at that point. And as I began the second stanza to avoid the awkward silence, a senior officer stepped the whole thing. A senior officer stopped the whole thing and a member of the audience was then asked to conduct the congregation and the organ, beginning at the top with the slow tempo, through all three stanzas with which everyone, including me, brought back to the starting line and subject to the baton. We managed to get through it this way, but not without considerable embarrassment. Up until then, I used to believe that not every day is a good one for the organist, was an observation that tended to fade into oblivion with the onset of crow's feet, gray hair, more pill bottles and the use of a cane. I was wrong about that too, even though I was well prepared and the instrument gave sufficient support for the singing. I never anticipated that the singers would drag through it with such perfunctory indifference to the tempo set by the organ. This wasn't the typical dragging that the organist can encounter in a singing congregation from time to time. It was a complete mismatch in tempo from the get-go. When any congregation sings, the organ must lead, but this time that didn't seem to matter. Afterwards, since the same closing song is prescribed for the congregation's regular meetings, I was asked to chair a committee to come up with a solution to keep this kind of calamity from happening again, even to the point of recommending a different song to be prescribed, if need be. My feeling is, the problem isn't with the song, although it isn't particularly easy to sing, and I really don't think it needs to be changed. It's a beautiful song. The singers just need to get in sync with the organ and stay that way. Pay attention to the organ, pay attention to the tempo taken by the organ, 
and not go their merry way with blinders on their ears. The fact that so many of the singers in the audience preferred such a slow tempo was only learned by this organist, sad to say, after everything crash landed and not before. The organist wasn't fired over it, the situation wasn't that dire, nobody lost their life over it, no blood was drawn, but it occurred to me that the question of how to best move forward from here would benefit other organists as well as myself. Any suggestions you or OSHA may have from your personal experiences or circle of acquaintances that could be shared with your subscribers, including myself, about possible steps to take would be greatly appreciated. Many thanks, as always, Steve. So, that's a very uh, colorful question, very extended description. I hope Stephen... Uh, uh, wrote a blog post out of it. It's very entertaining. I kept laughing, you know, inside of me while you kept reading it. Because actually, you know, we have talked about rehearsing for congregation before service if you know hymns are unfamiliar. Or, you know, uh, putting your choir members downstairs among mixing them with the congregation members that we could, you know, lead the congregational singing. But obviously there are sometimes ways when you just have to adjust to your congregation and you have to adapt. Because, you know, if a minister has to you know to stop service and to start that hymn over again, that's not a good sign. It shouldn't be like this. And uh, in some cases, I think what you can do actually just, you know, to either to adapt to them or just to quit a church. It reminded me, you know, about that situation that we had many years ago in Lithuania, uh -huh. when we were just, you know, an organ students at the Academy of Music, and we, with us and I, were sharing one position of, you know, organ organists in a small church in the center of Vilnius, and basically, uh, old ladies were so unhappy about, you know, how we played organ, me, and it was a problem of us playing hymns too fast for them. And since I played a little bit slower, we preferred me over with us. And I remember one li old lady, you know, chasing with us through maybe one kilometer, you know, <laughs> behind after a service until she finally caught him and, you know, started to teach him how to play, you know, that he needs to take a slow tempo because elderly people are in the congregation and so on and so forth. But basically, at that right moment, I understood that it's basically a good time to quit. We didn't at that moment, but actually we were both fired without any explanations maybe a few months later. So I guess, you know, sometimes these things are simply hopeless. That's right, Osha. Um, I guess another solution would be to, to sing more new hymns that people don't know and they don't uh, have any prejudice. Yes, that way, you know, we could listen more to what organ is doing. Mm -hmm. But this situation shows that this congregation is not willing to adapt. It, it's simply the fact of life, right? And... Um, I wonder if they sing loudly enough or actively. I, I presume that they are sort of lethargically uh, sleeping with their eyes open and uh, moving through the motions, not actively participating in the service. Well, I'm not sure about that, but but anyway, you know, you could either you know play the organo pleno <laughs> and try to you know to 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 ignore what is happening downstairs. Or you could maybe, you know, have your own microphone and, you know, sing like solo very loudly above them all. But basically, I think in these cases like this, it's, you no, know, it's useless to fight. Yes, because one or two or five people will start complaining. And those, those people, maybe they are in a minority, they will be loud minority. And, you know, like in that, uh, our old story, I think what happened that, you know, that old lady and her friends started complaining to a priest day after day after day after day. 
and he didn't have another solution only you know to get rid of us it was easier for him to get rid of us but, than to but, get rid of but, old ladies but what i found out <laughs> later that actually instead of us her son started to play the organ in that church. Old lady's so, son? Yes. Mm-hmm. So that was, you know, a corruption a little bit. Ah, so, maybe she had some plans. Yes, Evil she plans. definitely did. Because, you know, these sort of pretenders to be very faithful in the Catholic churches, you know, that are very day and night, we are not doing, you know, really good things to the church. Mm-hmm. Although we think that we are the most holy and we know the things right, and don't you, are you aren't you glad that we no longer work in this church? Yes, I am. I, I really am. <laughs> so you always have to choose sometimes the less obvious way, and do what feels right for your heart. Yes, that's right. Thank you, guys. Uh, we hope this was useful to you. Please send us more of your questions. We love helping you grow. And remember, when you practice, miracles happen. This podcast is supported by Total Organist, the most comprehensive organ training program online. It has hundreds of courses, coaching, and practice materials for every area of organ playing. Thousands of instructional videos and PDFs. You will not find more value anywhere else online. Total Organist helps you to master any piece, perfect your technique, develop your sight reading skills, and improvise or compose your own music and much, much more. Sign up and begin your training today at organduo.lt and click on Total Organist. And of course, you will get the first month free too. You can cancel anytime. If you like our organ music, you can also support us on Patreon and get free CDs. Find out more at patreon.com slash secrets of organ playing.